All right, y'all, so coming at you today with my top three exercises for side delts. In case you're new here, or this is the first time watching one of my videos, um, in reality, I should probably title this the best places to start. Um, and again, that's really the goal of all of these. I'm not really implying that any of these are definitively better than other exercises, but as a coach, as a trainer, you know, you have to have some principles or some reasons behind your exercise selection, and you want to be able to give people direction. So you want to be able to say, hey, this is, like I said, a great place to start. And then when the individual comes into the equation, you know, the individual gym that they're at, equipment they're at, things absolutely can change. So again, I'm going to give you three exercises on this list. It doesn't mean there are only three. By me leaving something off of this list doesn't imply that it's bad. Um, but again, as a coach, as a trainer, I have some principles that basically I, I adhere to or listen to um, for exercise selection that I try and apply consistently all across the board. And again, stuff for side delts is no different. So again, side delts, again, basically you have, depending on who you talk to, three to seven heads to your delt. Um, but again, if we're really just breaking up from kind of visual and things that make sense, obviously you have your front, you have your side, you have your rear, just so we know what we're talking about. Um, and again, the thing about side delts, in my opinion, that is massively important, whether you just want to look good with your shirt off, whether you're a competitive bodybuilder, whatever it is, is they really, really add to this V taper type thing. So again, whether you want to look good with your shirt off or you're a bodybuilder, it's the silhouette your body creates that's probably the most important thing that first catches people's eye even before they look at all the other stuff. So anything that makes your waist look smaller, your shoulders broader, is gonna be very, very important to body parts. So like I kinda of said, <clears throat> you want a great looking V-taper, make sure that you're lean, keep your waist nice and small, and the broader you can look up top, anything that lends itself. So of course, all the heads of your delts add to that, but especially those side delts, very, very important muscle groups, again, for aesthetic, for just looking good. Um, so my number one pick to start is going to be lying cuff lateral raises. Um, and again, I'll talk through this one a little bit on the video, but in case you're wondering why I really picked through some of these exercises, um, one of the most important things is just understanding where your muscles can produce force. Again, force, intramuscular force, is the most important thing for putting on muscle. So for whatever stimulus or trigger you need to occur in the gym that hopefully leads to you being able to recover and put on muscle, everyone kind of uniformly agrees that force production is it. And so again, if you haven't watched some of my videos, your muscles tend to be the strongest um, in their kind of mid and lengthened ranges. And again, if you're not familiar with that, you could always just look up length tension relationship. Um, and so again, people long before me have studied where muscles can produce the most force. Um, and so again, that's one of my most consistent training principles. If you're looking for exercises that again are gonna be the best or most efficient for building muscle, you want things that typically are gonna overload or load a muscle in their mid and lengthened ranges. And again, some of this is nice that we have some science behind it, but if you look at kind of your most typical mass builder exercises before anybody thought about this, so even looking back 20, 30, 50 years, you know, that's the reason that squats are so beneficial, chest press, bench press, deadlifts, all of those movements overload muscles in their mid to lengthen ranges. There's a reason if I had to pick one of two exercises to grow a big chest, it's gonna be some sort of press as opposed to some sort of fly. Fly loads the muscle where it's very short and weaker, presses overload the muscle where it's stronger. So first one is gonna be a lying cuff lateral raise, and one of the main reasons, aside from some other things I'm gonna go into detail about, is gonna be the fact that it overloads the muscle from its lengthened and mid range. Um, so again, it's not even so much about where it's lighter in certain parts, it's about where it's heaviest, where it's gonna produce the most force. All right, guys, so like I had said, this is my top pick for side delts, and I'm just gonna highlight a couple um, reasons why, and then we'll watch Terrence do a set and watch his delts get big. Uh, but some of the main things, the number one reason that I like this is you'll see once he gets going, wherever the exercise is hardest, and hardest just means the most torque at the shoulder joint, which means your side delts are arguably gonna have to work the most, is where the cable is at basically 90 degrees to his upper arm. So you'll see when he starts down here, right from this position right through here, it's extremely heavy. So basically it's the heaviest from here to here, and that's the point where his delts, side delts particularly, are the strongest. Um, so that is the number one advantage of here, as opposed to a dumbbell, it's the lightest and the easiest here. Here it's the heaviest and the hardest. As he comes up to the top and that cable actually gets closer to a shoulder joint, it also gets lighter, which is also a good thing because that's where your delts tend to get weaker. And the other little things, you still have the advantage of the other exercises. 
You can adjust the cable position so you can adjust what's plane is going to work best. Keep most of it on the side delt, not on the other heads. And then the bench is just a nice advantage as well too because it helps keep everything still. A big thing with dumbbell raises, you don't have to look too far in any gym to see somebody using every single you know, joint and muscle in their body to do the lateral raise. Where here, this really keeps you strict and keeps you honest because your entire body is locked in stone and still. So Terrence is going to do a working set now. And so again, if you guys are setting this up at home, it doesn't have to be exact. It's going to be a little different from person to person, but he's going to have the cables anywhere from a couple inches to maybe six inches above his body. So where he's at, at. And so basically, again, if you have cables that are close or cables that are wide, you can still do pretty much the same thing on all of them. Good. And big cues on this and all side delt raises of any variation is always think out um, as opposed to up. And that'll help keep you a lot on the delts and minimize upper traps doing too much work. Good, Terrence, come on. Go, 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 good. Another one, easy. Go, 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 go. Let's go one. Smoother if I gotcha. Go, 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 go. Nice, good set. My number two exercise on the list is going to be a machine lateral raise. Um, and so again, there's a whole bunch of different machines. Um, my two favorite, just again, I'm not affiliated with these brands, but just so people know, Atlantis makes a great lateral raise where you can grab the handles and raise. The one you're gonna see in a video is an Icarian one, also an awesome piece, you can grab the handles. Uh, but the ones that load through your arms, through your shoulders, so they have a pad on the outside of your arm or the pad on the outside of your elbow are also great options as well. And again, what's the reason for this being my number two on the list? Same as the cables for the start, is the fact that it loads your delts where they are strongest. So it loads them right from the beginning of the exercise, you know, through the, um, uh, the lengthened and mid radians of the delt. Um, and so again, that's one of the main reasons that I will pick this same as the cables It overloads your muscles where they're the strongest so you can have the highest level of force production. All three of these examples, you really have the opportunity for alignment. Um, so again, that's another principle is making sure that it lines up properly with the side delt. So again, that's the advantage. All three of these have are pretty similar. You can make it line up great, but these first two really have edges over the third one based solely on the fact of where can they produce force. And the third exercise on the list is going to be a seated or chest supported lateral raise. And so a, tra a traditional dumbbell lateral raise. And so this is number three. Sometimes it's number three just because I realize not everyone has access to cables all the time. Not everyone has access to a machine. And so again, I'm not implying that a dumbbell lateral raise is inferior to the other two or you, that you are ineffective compared to the other two or that you can't grow side delts doing it. Of course you can. But again, the big difference with that uh, dumbbell lateral raise as opposed to the cable or the machine is that it overloads the delt where it's shortest and, it t and it's where it's weakest, has the least amount of force production. So again, if you're doing any type of dumbbell lateral raise, it has the most torque, and again, that's what your muscles rest on, is torque, the most torque at the shoulder joint when you're at the top position. When you're at the bottom position and that dumbbell is stacked below the shoulder joint, there's little to no torque actually at the shoulder joint. And so again, you're not loading the delt where it is strongest and where it has the most force production. So that's the main reason that dumbbells are gonna be number three on this list compared to the other two. Um, and again, I know traditionally that's one of the main mass builders for side delts. Um, and again, obviously evidence is important. 
Of course, lots of people have grown very large side delts doing those exercises, so of course they can still be done. If you don't have access to the cables, if you don't have access to the machine, I'm not saying you're never gonna have big side delts. I'm just saying for the reason of where your delts are strongest, I'm gonna give the other two exercises the slight edge. All right, y'all, so last one here is gonna be the seated. I'm gonna demo basically seated and chest supported dumbbell lateral raise. Um, so again, as far as form is set up exactly as you would normally do a dumbbell lateral raise. The reason this is number three again and not number one or two is the fact that like every muscle, your delts are gonna be strongest through here. So this is kind of their length and middish range. So they're just capable of the most force production there. This exercise, a dumbbell raise, again, if you kind of understand just a little bit torque production, this position is by far the hardest. If you had the line of force from that dumbbell, it's the furthest at this point in time from the shoulder joint. So it's basically the hardest or the heaviest here as far as your delt is concerned. So it's kind of the opposite of what your delts are capable of doing. Again, this is the only option you got. You can still put on muscle doing this absolutely. Again, it's just maybe arguably not as efficient as the first two. So again, like you would normally do for a normal lateral raise, just make sure that you have your delt, side delt kind of on the top of the joint when you're at the top position meaning you wouldn't want your hand turned this way. That would put kind of more your front delt on top. Or if you're too far leaned over, then it's gonna turn into a rear delt exercise. So find the position that fits you best. And then I just recommend doing it either seated or ideally chest supported on a bench. What's the reason for that? Again, if you walk through gyms, people that do lateral dumbbell lateral raises, you'll literally see people doing this. They come up on their toes, they bend their knees, they move their hips, they bend their elbows, they swing everything. They get so many muscles involved so they can just move more weight. And the reality obviously of exercise is if your goal is to change your physique to build muscle, build, build muscle in specific places, is to make it as hard as possible for the trained muscle. So if you just get on a bench, in this case you could be standing with your chest on the pad or even better, depending on the bench, depending on your setup, your height, you could be kneeling. So again, now I can't move pretty much my lower body if I keep my chest on the pad. Pretty much the only thing that I can work is going to be my side delts. And if you're gonna do this, I just recommend staying where it's hard. So again, down here, there's no torque at the shoulder. I could literally do this all day. Um, but again, up here, it's challenging. So I'd spend time getting a good contraction to the top, maybe just stick in the top half, top three quarters range of motion. And that way you're still taking advantage of the exercise where it is hardest. And again, if you don't have access to a machine, you don't have access to cables, um, a way to do this is again, something that people have been doing for a long period of time, which I think is a very good idea is we'll use two pairs of dumbbells. So you do the lighter dumbbells, train up here, basically where it's hardest with that given dumbbell, grab a heavier load and then do partials. So again, don't feel bad if you don't have access to cables or a good lateral raise machine, you can make do with what you've got. And I'd probably say that is the best way to go about it. Lighter dumbbells, top half, top three quarters, heavier dumbbells for partials. So that is your top three side delt exercises. You're looking for some big round capped delts that would be the order that I would go in. Typically, as it would go in a normal shoulder workout, I'd only really pick one out of three. So if you haven't watched a couple of my other videos, one of my big things is to try and avoid redundancy within your training. So again, there would, in my opinion, be no point to have a cable lateral raise, a machine lateral raise, and then a dumbbell lateral raise. It's all training the same plane of motion, basically the exact same muscle fibers. Pick whichever one that you have. Again, one I would recommend starting with one if you have it or going to two or having three, whichever one you have access to, pick it, train it hard, train it progressively. And again, all three of them can work to put on delts. I just give those first two the slight edge for where they can produce the most force. As always, if you appreciate the video, please leave me some comments below. Um, give me the little thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, and again, feel free to share my stuff. Um, I'm always appreciative of that. And as always, look out for the next video.